Yes, Abhishek, welcome. Hello, how, us... how are you? Good morning. Morning, morning. Tell us a little bit about uh, your talk and why you were excited to talk about Google Cloud. That is, actually, you are one of the, the first talking about Google Cloud. We, we are... We were a little bit biased in the past, talking a lot about AWS, AWS. So we said, this year, we should not talk about AWS. <laughs> and, you know, we excuse Anti for talking AWS Lingual, but um, it, it's not just one cloud. And I really appreciate you coming and talking about GCP and the fantastic journeys you guys are on. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, so you, you're right. There, there is always going to be a, a bias around AWS and Azure simply because they were there earlier. AWS have quite a mature platform that's well known. So I think it's it's common for people to speak about things they know about. Um, mm. And I certainly keep hearing it. Um, along come Azure, they're similar to a degree. Uh, and then you, you've got a span in the works, uh, a GCP, which, which is different. Uh, uh, adoption of that <clears throat> and how it's growing it is testament to the fact that they have something that people want. Um, if you look at the job market today, you're looking at GCP architects. There's just not enough people for that sort of for that sort of role. Um, so the adoption of the platform is faster than the skills that we have in the industry. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on GCP for around three years now. Um, so I thought it'd be good to share some learnings um, on, on what I've been doing. And hopefully other people can avoid the mistakes I made. Or <laughs> learning, uh, learning. There is no uh, yeah. mistake in the cloud. There is just learning. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you're right. Actually, it's not really a mistake. It's it's the time of learning actually, um, because the business doesn't stop. It wants stuff done yesterday. So there's a limited time of learning, I would say, and that's why I thought shit. Why I thought. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so let me know uh, if you're ready to go. All good. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, Fantastic. Does this work? Yes, it does. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, right. a, just a bit about me, really. Um, so I've been working with the cloud for over 10 years. Um, I've got experience in AWS, Azure and GCP. Primary areas of focus have been fintech security, DevSecOps and software security. Um, as I said earlier, GCP is about three years. Um, so I've got a fascination for, for ladybirds or, or bugs. Um, going, going back to what we were speaking about earlier, I used to be a, a developer. And the joke was that I was so bad, all I could do was make bugs. So I thought I'd hop into security. Um, so I'm one of the people that have moved from uh, development background into security. And that was because I was really bad at bugs, but I was really good at security. Um, so I knew what to do, just not how to do it. So hence the ladybird. So when you look at Google's proposition and what they're, they're pitching really um, from, a, from a sales perspective, what they're really talking about to, to the IT leaders you know, of, of the businesses out there that broadly speaking, um, their platform can help you get more insights from your data which basically means that you're able to make better decisions um, without acquiring any new data. Um, and to that end, it open up, opens up opportunity because there's a, there's a cost of acquisition of data, marketing campaigns, um, phone calls, what have you. And Google are saying, oh, by the way, you've got a lot of data, you're just not getting enough from it. And as a result, people are drawn to, to, to the Google Cloud platform because of opportunity they can unlock. Um, what I think, in the Azure and AWS space could do the same thing. They don't have that proposition as clearly defined as Google have in my in my in my um, in my experience. So they were very clear when they spoke to me about what they kind of could do and what it did really well. Uh, and it wasn't about hosting VMs in the cloud or, or doing cloud migrations. It was about getting the right architecture to enable you to make more decisions based on the data that you have. So they spoke about machine learning. They spoke about artificial intelligence. They spoke about cloud functions. They spoke about big table. They talked about big query, all these sorts of things that allow you to get more insight. The second thing they spoke to him about in a lot of detail was the fact that they own and manage their own network in its entirety. And it's the same network that they use to host Google platform. So from that point of view, my view was, okay, obviously you're highly available because 
Google really goes down. So that was that was quite a good sell. Uh, and, and the third thing they spoke about, which they're quite passionate about with me, was they encrypt everything everywhere all the time. Um, they use their own keys, obviously, to encrypt everything uh, by default. Um, but but they do automatically. And, and to many folk who, who aren't in the um, IT security, information security space, that sounds like, OK, that's a big win. Because most people think about security and encryption in the same sentence. So the, the, the thing that it leaves with really is Google really invents all the time, and so can you. And before they finish their pitch, um, the credit card's on the table, and I've got my welcome email saying, welcome to Google Platform. So that's, that's, the, that's what I see as the, as the general trend in terms of why Google's adoption is increasing and, and, and the benefits it can bring you. Um, as mentioned earlier, I'm not saying that Azure and AWS can't do the same thing. They just don't proposition themselves in that same space, in my opinion. So yeah, I personally didn't get the Google welcome email. I think I was the second or third person there. So, um, so, so yeah. So you delve deeper <clears throat> into what, in, into what um, security is in, in Google and you look at the sorts of areas they operate in. They've got, like many other cloud platforms, they've got an organization policy. They, they've got something akin to AWS Security Hub or Azure Security Center. They call it Security Command Center. They've got your, your IAM. They've got some proxies. They've got firewalls. They've got DDoS. They've got a WAF, um, Cloud Armor, Apigee. They've got Secrets Manager. They encrypt everything by default. And you look at that shopping list and you think to yourself, do you know what? I could do this. This, sounds, this, this, is, this is what I'm expecting. So from a, if you look at it from purely from, do I have enough tools to do what I need to do? At this stage, you think you do. And the truth is you can. It's, it's, it's not like you can't do what you need to do. It's just the way in which they need to be implemented is different. So after the sales pitch has happened, the credit card's out, you've got a working email, and you've had a good look at the security toolbox, you think to yourself, I can have a go at this. And then, and then you then you get into a world of let's lift off, let let's get to the cloud now on on Google, hence a spaceship. So, what was the next step for me? We 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 had a an enterprise agreement or a service agreement with with Google, and I ended up doing a lot of googling, on the internet, obviously on Google, not using Bing to search for Google things, um, and a lot of talking to to Google about what their proposition actually meant. Because in the earliest time, I was talking about the tools from a generic point of view. What I was really interested at this stage was, what does it really mean to me? How do I use these tools? What are, my, what are the implications or the restrictions that these tools have? What are the kinks that I need to be focused on? So broadly speaking, there were, there were five areas that, that, I, that I found more of interest to me. Um, but the first one is, as stated on the slide, you can only really have um, one org policy in intent. Um, whilst that might sound quite um, quite straightforward, which it is, uh, and not, uh, not restrictive, <clears throat> it becomes restrictive when you want to have multiple postures in the same environment. So that was the first thing that got me thinking, really. Um, so G Google hasn't got a concept of, of hub and spoke, um, which traditionally lives in the, in the AWS and Azure space. Projects is what they use. Um, they've got their they've got their topology laid out in folders and projects from a logical perspective. So the projects is where the assets go into. So those things I was talking about earlier, things like Cloud Function, BigQuery, Bigtable, VMs, what have you, they reside in projects. And these projects are the actual security boundary. And what I found is there's no real way to group them. So I couldn't do let me put these 10 projects into one folder and apply security at that folder level and it cascade down. Then I found that doing security configuration really needs to be at a component level. Um, there are settings and, and parameters that reside in those features I mentioned earlier, which require configuration. Um, not having a public bucket, for example, is quite straightforward. But how about not having a public database? Or how about not having a cloud function which is available externally but only internally? Where will that configuration be 
done at a, at a whole at an enterprise wide level or a project level. So it got me thinking. Then, then there was another area which was of a lot of interest, which was the concept of Google services and how they're accessed. So Google presents the, the vast range of their services APIs. Um, when you've got something called interconnect, which is what we it rolled out, um, you need to work out how you're, you're routing to Google. Because as an example, you might have a, a, a commercial corporate um, Google Drive uh, or Google Docs um, type, type implementation. And that would normally go on the public internet. Now I've got private connectivity. Do I want that traffic going over the private connection into my cloud? So it's interesting how you need to consider how you route traffic into Google once you have a subscription. Um, and that leads me to the last point, really. So I found that Google Command Center or Security Command Center didn't map to any security compliance at that point in time, um, which meant it was quite hard to report on um, from my perspective, because ideally you report on the compliance of the cloud. So you'd know where you stand from a, a NIST, perhaps CIS, CSA perspective. Um, so, so that's what that, that's what I was focused on. The two images on the right, what I found when I was doing a lot of the talking to Google, that I am is actually the center of the universe. For everything I spoke about, everything was I am. Obviously, from what I'm describing in this slide, there's a lot more to it than just I am. And as a result, I got into a, a hamster wheel type scenario, which is where a lot of my learnings and failings happened um, about how to move things forward. So there was a bit of time um, where we were literally chasing our own tail. And I was that person in that hamster wheel there. So um, it didn't happen for too long, fortunately for me. We were able to move forward. But just a thought on, on the fact that they do things differently means you have to obviously re-engineer how you do security. And it's not as straightforward as what people do know, which is common, i.e. have been spoken AWS in Azure. So I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so, so what are the implications of, of this Googling, talking, and I am being central universe and me on that hamster wheel? What it really meant was the old policy had to be the lowest common denominator. In an environment where you've got multiple uh, customers sharing the same fabric, you can't afford to have your, your security at the highest level, at org level, because that limits the amount of variation and posture management you can do within the subscription itself. So your org policy literally to support that model, a multi-tenanted GCP model would need to be what I found at the lowest common denominator. What that, what that then alludes to is what I said earlier is that the security configuration of the projects becomes critical because that's where the actual security band is enforced. Um, and moving on to, to how you enforce that consistency in that boundary, um, we needed to assure the code through the infrastructure pipeline in the same way you would do application code. So things like dynamic testing and static testing of Terraform or whatever thing you're using to interact with the cloud, uh, GCP would need to be done the same way to assure that the components are secured. Um, and and that, was a, that was a learning because normally you would get that consistency from a org level or a, or as your policy or an AWS security of top space. But here you're literally doing it at the component level. Um, so, so, so DNS needs to be reconfigured when it's interconnect to make sure you're, you're routing the traffic where it's cheapest and, and most appropriate. Um, and as I mentioned earlier about the posture management and the compliance, you probably need third party tools to, to do that because the, the actual capability in security command center doesn't lend itself well to reporting and governance is, is what I found. So what was the approach? What did I learn from this? Um, authoring actual configuration specifications for components was really important. So that described the actual settings at component level per item that was being used. So, and, and, and from there, you're able to write um, unit tests or security tests in this case, to ensure that the code being pushed through the pipeline adhere to that specification. So you've almost got a, a, so you actually do have it in the CRCD process. You, you've got these the stage gates for for QA pre prod and prod um, for application code. We'd have the same for infrastructure. So it, it's really about using the development lifecycle to promote infrastructure code, 
and making sure the definition of done was adherent to that specification which was set out earlier. Uh, and that's akin to test-driven development in, in terms of the ways of working. Um, given that, that I am is the center of the universe for, for, for GCP, um, using tools to, to detect abnormal IAM activity became quite important because that is where the bulk of the security sits in the Google space is what I found. Um, so, so moving on to the application and development experience, we need to ensure that the application themselves are coded in a secure way. So while that might sound quite um, normal, when, when you're developing on net new product like a cloud function, for example, or you're using Kubernetes, there are some variations and distinctions that need to be made about how applications are developed and where the security control is inserted and to that degree, how they felt safe. So we need to ensure that there was both the rigor and architectural governance on, on how the application was deployed. So things like making sure that logs don't have PII, for example, and they get to stack driver was quite an important consideration, given that stack driver is distributed across all projects. Um, and I think last but not least, the approach that we took was not to let Google mark their homework. And that's quite, that was quite a, this is quite a subtle thing there because what Google are, obviously pretty good at security in the cloud. When it comes to uh, assurances and third party verification, that is our responsibility. And, and to that end, there needs to be something watching the, the person doing the work from a third party point of view. So we took that sort of approach when it comes to Google Cloud Platform, particularly because of the different way in which we had to engineer the security controls. And, and because at that point in time, security command center was, was, was quite new. and didn't have all the functionality that it had. So to that end, getting third party tools to, to almost verify the uh, compliance status uh, and if the threats are being exploited in Google was quite important. So that in a nutshell, those are the lessons that I learned and, and how things proceeded keen to open up the, the floor for some questions, if anyone's got any. Yeah, I have I have one. So the the, the, the talk is really interesting and I, and I really like uh, how you, you mentioned the difference mindset that you start with, you know, routing traffic that is against everybody's mind. And I think I had the, the same thing with uh, Azure and AWS where routing was very, very different, but I think GCP take it to the extreme. So how many concepts had you had you had to demolish from a pew how to build things when you started? And then the following on question is how many security concepts do you had to rethink when when starting GCP? So so I don't think I think the concepts are are very similar. So i.e. as we mentioned earlier, route your traffic in the most appropriate way, find the right exit point, secure that traffic. I think conceptually that's always been the requirement. The problem that we've got is that from a Google point of view, we're actually all customers of Google. Um, we all go to the Google engine. We all use OneDrive. Um, we all use right. Gmail. We all use all these these things. Uh, obviously, OneDrive is a, a Microsoft product, but we all use um, Google Drive. We all use YouTube. We all use all these products. So once on the corporate LAN, do you want the access of those consumer products to be going via interconnect, which can get quite expensive. If I wasn't a consumer of, of, of YouTube um, and, and the other services, it would probably be easier. When you look at AWS, I'm just consuming AWS. Amazon.com is a separate entity uh, from a routing perspective, it's just a website. So it's more mm -hmm. around the, the, the way the APIs are exposed. And the security risk I had to consider was in, in an IAM, perspective, if I had an IAM credential in GCP, which allowed me to query statistics around YouTube, for example, that would be open on the interconnect. I wouldn't want that. So it's about distinguishing the, the routing and trying to almost appreciate I'm also a customer and a supplier internally from the same cloud. Um, Brilliant. And, and, that, and that becomes quite different. I mean, I can't just say to people, stop using google.com. Well, you could. I don't. I don't know how how, how effective that would be. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. So it's those sorts of things you've got to think about because in, in the Microsoft space and in the AWS space, you're not actively consuming those products as a consumer um, to that degree. Yeah. 
Google Maps is another example. We use it all the time. So it's those, those considerations, I would say. Um, and architecturally, it, it's having that, that mindset, okay, Google is not just GCP. Google is this plus the other services that mm -hmm. people use every day in their normal lives. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you agree Question. do you agree with what Mario is saying that the AI model and GCP are the best and more powerful of the three? It, it's an interesting thing that Mario's pointing out. So I think from a technical perspective, it's powerful. It's backed by OAuth 2. It's integratable into, into the other IDPs like Azure AD. I, I agree with that. They've got something, they're getting quite close to what I would describe as attribute best access. So you need a you need a, a credential to authenticate to an API. Where I find it very difficult is historically, IT teams and InfoSec teams find it very hard to manage identity. You only got to look mm. at Active Directory. No matter which organization I go to, AD will always be <laughs> So the fact is, if you can't manage that properly, how do you manage this? So That's why you're so powerful, because everything is based on it <laughs> or not. <laughs> exactly. So what I, I totally agree with, with, with the VMario has, that it is powerful. It really is the way it's been architected. But unfortunately, historically, we can't manage identity really well. And when you start looking at federation and you start looking at B2B, it gets even more complicated. So I think it's just consideration, really. The fact that it can be yeah, really good on paper, but in reality, you've got other, you've got other challenges in IAM. <laughs> I think it, it needs a mindset shift when you need to start thinking a little bit more about service specific or entity that are completely abstract in the cloud that can authenticate. So uh, a machine, a service can have their own authentication or can authenticate against something. And that's kind of the mindset shift where a lot of security folk, especially the traditional one or management are thinking authentication equal user. Exactly, exactly. So so Google are really, it's interesting because they've got concepts like work cloud entity. They've got, they've got concepts around federation. They've got concepts around integrating into multiple or into IDPs. That's all and good for users, but that workload identity is actually local to Google. So you actually do have a set of service accounts which just reside in Google. Mm -hmm. How do you manage those in the application space? Then obviously you get to secrets management, rotating your keys every 90 days. So it gets more and more, I wouldn't say complicated, but the process gets more drawn out. So automation is really important to get the best of I am, is what I'm getting to, to make it a non-human thing, to get the most value out of it. Um, and I think that's the case in, 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 in most IAM areas. An extensive use of IAM, I think, lends itself to, to that sort of, I think, consideration specifically for GCP. Mm. No, it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for the talk on, on GCP. It's something that we traditionally haven't touched enough. And it's, it's, it's such a different mindset and, and shift, um, especially because you have all these services that you traditionally see, like, Google search or analytics that are embedded in a lot of organization, but people don't think a lot of this as cloud because they're very much as past service. And in GCP, it's funny how now they, they, they converted the cloud control uh, kind of dashboard where you have all this control all in one place. And, and it's weird to think about this is GCP, right? It, it, exactly. So when I speak to, when I speak to fellow colleagues in industry, we we'll actually say that GCP is an application development on the platform. That's actually what it is in a nutshell. You're not going to go to GCP to host a virtual machines, are you? You're going to go to no. GCP for applications. And that's I think that, that's a mindset shift. I think yeah. that's a mindset shift that is is very different from traditional. I think Azure, it's kind of a hybrid that has some past service and some data center service. AWS has been pretty much data, cent data center centric or cloud environment centric. and that's why GCP is, is so complex to get it from a security because it's a totally different mindset. It's, it's a level of abstraction above, I think, others. Yeah, and that's why I think it's, it's going back to our point earlier is that you need to teach um, developer security as a result if you want to get the best out of GCP. <laughs> 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 but then they need to teach you. But then they need to teach you how to build stuff in GCP and how to deliver things in pipeline and how to automate and scale. That is something I want to talk uh, a little bit later. Um, but Kriti, do you have any any question or any any experience of your? I was actually yourself? just going to continue on the same conversation, Abby. Um, the question was probably how how compared to the you know the other platforms, how does Google integrate 
with other um, security tools, say for example, if someone wants to push their logs across somewhere else for verification or validation or into a, a SOC engine, how that uh, does it integrate well? Does it does it, it, does it, 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 it does. So one thing that GCP do really do really do really well actually is, is they've got a, a huge catalog of APIs. So it is possible to integrate at an API level using a, a webhook to subscribe to real-time information, what have you. The issue that I think we have is that there's not many security tools that are that modern um, that allow mm -hmm. you to do that. So you've got legacy security tooling in your on-premise state, for example, and then you've got a webhook just waiting for you, and it's really, it's really, it's just there. All of you subscribe to it, but you, you need a, a, an API gateway or some little way to get to it because you've got SOAP on one end and REST on the other, and it, it just becomes, it becomes mm -hmm. convoluted. So uh, I, I think it's about can it integrate. Yes, it can, but you need you need an ecosystem of security tools which are modern to the same degree. When you start integrating legacy on-prem security tools, that's when you get into challenge. Doesn't work like think, that, does it? <laughs> no, and I think other cloud provider have maybe a little bit easier job on integrating traditional tools because they're more traditional. You know, you don't have work in past service. How, how are you going to scan a past service with infrastructure uh, tools? You can't. You need to shift your mind. And so you need to adapt, first of all, the people and then the organization, and then the tool. So maybe startup are a little bit easier. But on the startup subject, actually, Antti is asking, uh, she's a GCP noob and she's a security person. So where she can learn more? So I, I, I think the thing that I looked at, when I was doing my learning was I was quite fortunate. We had um, a service agreement with, with Google and I was using them to do a lot of my learning. So you still there? I think the line's a bit fuzzy. Yeah. I think yeah so I was, you are still yeah, on. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I was doing, I was using them to do a lot of my learning. I was calling them every other day, basically. And I think I was their worst customer for a little while because I was taking so much of their time. <laughs> but I, I, was, I said to them, to Auntie's point, if this information I'm after was publicly on your website, I wouldn't need to call you. I can stick to Googling. Mm. It'd be absolutely fine. But to, to, to Auntie's point, there's limited, limited deep information on, on the internet around GCP. Um, and, and from a new point of view, I think the best course I found was actually the GCP Architect um, book. I quite liked that. It was pitched at the right level allowed me to look at the um, the right areas, focus on the right things. Um, and where it didn't go deep enough for me, um, I just spoke to Google. But in terms of getting yeah. a, a, a 101 um, type view, I, I thought that was a good course. All right, brilliant. We'll, uh, if, if you don't mind, can you put in the chat uh, link and then we'll put in the comments. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look for the course. Um, All right, the, brilliant. The GCP architect qualification certification. Um, and then, professional cloud architect is called actually. And then, uh, as I said, as Mario said, is 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 quite a journey for security. It was a journey for 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 me in itself because you need to change your shift and mindset. And you know, in AWS, I am is is an absolute nightmare because you have four hundred ways to put. Um, to put security where you put security, but uh, how how did you crack that element aside from talking to people? How did you change your mindset about authentication? I think I think to, I mean I was quite fortunate that I was quite early on in the in, in the project, so I didn't have to change the mindset. I just said we're doing it this way, and Google is an application of <laughs> platform. So I was quite lucky to have a green field. I like democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is the way it is. Here are your constraints. This is how you need to do it properly. Here's best practice. It's straightforward. Um, when you're looking at something a bit more brownfield, it becomes difficult, I would say. But principally, role-based access um, obviously works quite well if the roles are well-defined. But I think Google are moving to what I mentioned earlier, which is attribute-based access, which is very, very detailed. And where, where possible, I would use a pre-bundled role or described in Google. And if you need to do something which isn't in those roles, you do something a bit weird. You, do, you shouldn't have to write custom roles because there's so many of them. Why do something different? Just use what you've got. It's easier mm -hmm. to maintain that than write your own custom role. It, it was my feedback. Um, no, that's that's brilliant. 
All right. Thank you very much, Abhishek. We have the next talk by Kriti. Thank you, Abhishek. And it's, it, was a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful talk on GCP. That is, is a subject that we normally don't touch. Um, and if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how, how they can do it? Just drop me a line on LinkedIn. I'm happy to respond to messages. I don't use Twitter uh, just yet, um, but, but LinkedIn, LinkedIn is there for, for everyone. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to respond and, and feel free to get in touch. Uh, and thank you for having thank you me. Very, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. And now, thank you.